So hello, my name is Jesse Ketterman. I'm with the University of Maryland Extension, and I'm gonna be uh, joined by two of my colleagues, and we're gonna be presenting today on health insurance options for farmers and small business owners. And as I mentioned, my name is Jesse Ketterman. I'm with University of Maryland Extension. Uh, I am a family and consumer science educator in the Western part of Maryland. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dorothy, who can introduce herself, and then Maria. Hey there, I am also a financial educator with University of Maryland and um, maybe um, those who are with us, if you don't mind putting, if you're from Maryland, put your county in the chat box or if you're from somewhere else in the um, some other state, um, put that, but I am in Maryland and I serve Howard Frederick in Montgomery County. And I'm Maria Papitas and I work for the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. I am a county educator uh, and county director, and um, my focus is on financial management. So thanks for coming. Thank you, uh, Dorothy and Maria. And so we're gonna start off with what our plan is, and our plan for today is to uh, know the important insurance terms related to small businesses and farmers. We want to understand what you need to know about healthcare cost. Uh, identify items to consider when selecting insurance and to know where to go for information about insurance options. So that's our, our plan for today. So we, we framed our program today as in terms of what questions does someone need to answer. And so what we're going to look at it from is, is why. And when you look at why, why do I need to plan for health insurance? Uh, the what. And so what are my health insurance options? What resources provide that information? Uh, the how, which is how do I choose a plan? And if we can get uh, those questions answered, uh, you're gonna be able to make a smart choice around health insurance. And so first we're gonna start off with, with why do I need to plan for health insurance? And, and I'm gonna uh, share with you a couple reasons that we came up with in terms of why you need to plan and our first one is we want to ensure that you have uh, the coverage that you need to keep well. So, you know, one of the things with insurance is uh, insurance can help us keep, stay, keep and stay healthy. And so knowing that you have the right coverage and the right plan, uh, you can, you can keep, keep healthy. The other is to gain the most benefit from your insurance coverage. So if you know what your insurance covers and you're using that insurance, again, it's going to go back to that first point. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, keep healthy and well. And again, it's a service that you're paying for, so you're going to get the most benefit by knowing uh, what your insurance does cover and does provide. And then, you know, insurance does protect us financially from an unexpected health issue. You know, um, unexpected things do happen, whether it's an, ac uh, an accident or a chronic uh, disease issue. But, uh, you know, having insurance does protect you financially from an unexpected health issue. And then the other reason you need to, to plan for health care uh, is you need to know what types of insurance options are available for your individual situation. So everybody's situation is going to be a little different and you need to make sure that your, your insurance meets your particular uh, situation. And so the next question we kind of want to look at is, is the what. And so what are your health insurance options and what resources provide information about what your health insurance options are. And so there are some factors that uh, you need to consider. And so some factors that contribute to which health insurance plan you choose. Uh, one is gonna be the state in which you live. So each state uh, has different regulations that apply to the, the health insurance that's offered in that particular state. So you need to kind of know what your state is and what the requirements are in that state. Um, what the available health insurance policies and plans are, um, your income and age, as we mentioned, those are going to be factors that, that influence uh, the health in insurance plan you choose, um, you know, depending upon whether you're looking at it from a family perspective or from a business perspective, uh, how many family members you have or how many employees you have will be a factor. Um, and then how you have your, if it's a, a business, how do you have that business set up? Is it set up as a sole proprietorship? 
uh, an LLC or an S Corp, those are all things that you have to consider uh, when you're choosing your health insurance plan. Mm -hmm. And depending upon your situation, uh, you may need to consider multiple streams of insurance coverage to ensure the lowest price and the best coverage. So now I'm gonna uh, open up a poll and the poll is gonna uh, have these four options to choose from. So we're gonna kind of give you a definition and then you're gonna choose uh, either Children's Health Insurance Program, Medicare, Medicaid, or Marketplace. And so let me uh, move over here to the polling feature and the poll should uh, pop up on your screen. And you should have on your screen uh, four questions. You know, you, you might see one or two, but you can scroll down uh, and answer those questions. And, and the, the first question is, uh, which one is a federal health insurance program for people 65 and older and certain younger people with disabilities? So your, your options are the Children's Health Insurance Program, uh, also known as CHIP, Medicare, Medicaid, and Marketplace. Um, that's question one. Go ahead and put your answers in there with question one. And I'll keep... Uh, talking through them as people are answering questions. Question two, uh, insurance program that provides free or low cost health insurance coverage uh, to some low income people, families and children, pregnant women, elderly and people with disabilities. That's question two. Again, the same answers are your options. Question three, an insurance program that provides low cost health insurance coverage uh, to children and families uh, that earn too much to qualify for Medicaid, but not enough for private insurance. And uh, question four, a service uh, that helps people shop for and enroll in affordable health insurance. Uh, the federal government operates the marketplace and some states run their own marketplace. And Maryland is one of those states that operates its own marketplace. So it looks like we have the majority of answers. And uh, share the results and everybody should be able to uh, see the results now uh, and everyone has the correct answers there uh, a federal health insurance program for people 65 and older and certain younger people with disabilities that's Medicare uh, an, an insurance program that provides free and low-cost health insurance coverage to some low-income people families and children pregnant women the elderly and people with disabilities. That is uh, Medicaid, uh, insurance program that provides low cost health coverage to children and families that earn too much to qualify for Medicaid but not enough for private insurance. That is the Children's Health Insurance Program, also known as CHIP, and a service that helps people shop for and enroll in affordable health insurance. The federal government operates the marketplace. Some states run their own and everyone got that right, that is uh, the marketplace. And we're gonna go into detail about these uh, programs as we move forward here. And so these are, uh, are the options. There's eight of them that we're going to, to be talking about today. Uh, we're gonna to talk about all farm employer-based health insurance and association membership uh, programs, health insurance marketplace, health insurance provider uh, or a company, uh, skinny and short-term plans, also known as GAT plans, uh, those that are available to the mil military, so Armed Forces Health Insurance, Medicaid and Children's Health Insurance Program, and Christian Healthcare Plans and Healthcare Sharing Ministries, and Medicare. So we're going we're gonna to share these with you. We're not here to tell you uh, what is your best option. You're going to have to kind of you know, review each of those options but we're gonna provide you with an overview of those programs. And I'm gonna be turn it over to Maria, who's gonna lead that discussion. So uh, take it away, Maria, and we're gonna switch our, our presenter here. So it might be a short break as we switch the PowerPoint around. So thank you, Jesse. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna start off with uh, off-farm employer-based um, health insurance and um, or 
on uh, kind of relying on your spouse's health insurance, right? Um, so this is the idea that you as a small business owner may be able to be incorporated or covered by your spouse's um, employer-based health insurance. And so an employer-based health insurance plan um, is gonna offer group policy plans through that um, place of employment and oftentimes because of that, they, uh, that employer can negotiate, uh, especially larger employers, negotiate fairly decent costing health insurance plans and or coverage, again, depending on the size of the employer, um, and will often then offset the cost uh, for the employee and oftentimes the spouse or other family members. And so, you know, one of the benefits truly is that you're covered by health in insurance and that um, if this is an option, there, it's usually less expensive than other alternatives. And um, for some employers, they're actually offering a couple of different uh, options to choose from or plans to choose from. So, you know, if this is something that you're thinking about, you want to talk with the plan manager, maybe the HR director, um, to really see if you would be covered um, by your spouse's employees, uh, sorry, employer's uh, um, health insurance. And to, um, to, you know, do some comparison shopping, right? Uh, some employer-based plans have kind of high deductibles, but they also have the ability to do um, uh, flexible spending accounts or other kind of pre-tax dollars set aside to cover some of those higher cost items um, and or out-of-pocket costs. So again, it's sort of this idea of exploring that as an option because for some, it may be the cheapest way to go. I think the other piece though, it, is to think about you know assessing what are those healthcare needs that you have. So there's a cost question, and there's a, a you know what are the healthcare needs piece, and see whether or not you'd be covered. Some employers allow spouses to be covered or family members to be covered. Others others don't. So that's the first place to explore. The other uh, is association membership. And so it may be, for example, the Chamber of Commerce or uh, Farm Bureau. Um, some of the times those associations, as a member of those associations, they offer um, uh, a health insurance plan. Again, it is about uh, comparison shopping. Um, the difference between being covered by an employer-based plan, an employer may actually offer to cover some of the cost of the premium um, where you're not going to find that in an association membership situation. Um, in the association membership situation, um, the idea there is let's pool the members and then kind of make um, uh, because we have X number of members, hopefully a, a large number of them, then let's connect with a broker or health insurance provider and see if we can negotiate cheaper rates. So it's that idea of by combining membership numbers, um, we try to kind of provide a, a, a plan that has a lower cost. So that's how those two um, options may work. So where do you find out um, some resources about those options? It would certainly be in the employer-based situation, you're gonna wanna talk to the human resources representative um, or the health insurance provider to kind of get a sense of what might be covered in terms of, um, of um, uh, covering healthcare needs, but then also in terms of the cost that human resources representative is the person to um, connect with there. On the side of the association membership, um, that would be the health insurance plan agent or the broker for that member organization, right? So whether it's, you know, far, for Farm Bureau, for example, it's Nationwide who offers their insurance. Um, for, other, uh, for other associations, it may be a different health insurance provider. So connecting with them may also be um, another tool you can use to um, uh, figure out costs and coverage.
The next one I want to talk about is the health insurance marketplace. And this is the, um, the health insurance options that was created under the Affordable Care Act um, back in 2010 um, that created a health insurance marketplace and plans. And they are typically negotiated by the State Insurance Commission Commission's office. And as Jesse pointed out earlier, um, in Maryland, there the, the, the state kind of runs that plan for the state of Maryland. In Delaware, um, we're actually a partnership um, uh, program so that we partner with the federal government um, to offer plans uh, that are approved through our state health insurance um, commissioner's office. So how many choices you have is oftentimes divide, determined by the state. And by choices, I mean how many companies may be offering plans and then how many plans are actually offered by each of those companies. It's really easy to enroll. You would go to healthcare.gov um, and choose your state and it will then bring you to the state, lo the state website. So in Maryland, it's called the Maryland Health Connection. You could also Google that, right? Maryland Health Connection. In Delaware, it's Choose Health Delaware. And each state has got their own website or um, uh, kind of resource and information about what's available uh, locally. Um, but if you go to healthcare.gov, that's the federal uh, website, and it needs to be healthcare.gov, not .com, right? Healthcare.gov. Um, and choose the state, you'll be able to get to your local, um, your, your local marketplace. And again, the idea behind the marketplace was, let's try to pool all these independent um, consumers and pull them together so that we can negotiate better rates with those health insurance companies. So one of the um, benefits, big benefits for the health insurance marketplace is there are tax credits and tax um, subsidies that are provided for people who are making less than 400% of the poverty level. And so those um, costs really help, those subsidies and credits offset the premiums and it can really bring the premium down for, um, for families and individuals. And so um, there's an opportunity to comparison shop for the most part. Uh, most states have one or two health insurance providers at least offering plans. And um, you can find plans for just yourself or for your family members. And um, one of the other pieces, another benefit is that most states have what they call navigators or assisters who are there to help you figure it all out. They can't make the decision for you, but they can help you kind of go through the process of enrollment and, um, and, and filling out forms and things like that to kind of get you moving to get towards a, um, a choice. So um, oftentimes, you know, they're kind of the downside, right, is these considerations. And one of the things that we know is there are typically fewer plan um, options and typically fewer health insurance providers offered through that health insurance marketplace. So if you went to a broker or agent, um, they may be able to say, hey, there's 10 health insurance companies uh, licensed in our state to provide you health insurance. Um, but these two are the only ones on the marketplace. In order to get those tax credits and subsidies, you have to choose a plan that is offered through the marketplace. You can't go to a broker and say, I'm making less than 400% of the poverty level and I would like those um, subsidies and choose a plan that isn't offered on the marketplace. So there are some trade-offs. One of the things though that there, there are uh, some brokers and dealers who have been certified to also be able to sell the plans that are offered in the marketplace. 
and you can find out the names or the um, the companies that those people work for through that marketplace uh, website. And Jesse has put the healthcare.gov website in the chat. Thank you, Jesse. So one of the other cool things that is on the healthcare.gov um, website, certainly the resources for enrollment, there's some really great um, uh, explanations of how it sort of works, but they also have what's called a subsidy calculator. And so remember I mentioned that 400% of the poverty level or less. So there is a little calculator where you can put in your uh, number of family members and your income and it will kind of crunch the numbers for you to let you know how much of a subsidy you may be able to um, be eligible for. And that's really important because if you just go to Choose Health Delaware or the Maryland Health Connection um, and ask to look at their plans, you're not going to, you're going to see the plans and the information about the plans, but you'll also see the cost of that plan without a subsidy. And so you kind of have to do both in order to get um, an accurate uh, number for how much that plan will actually cost you. So now I'm going to switch gears here and talk a little bit about Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program. So Medicaid is a, um, is a health insurance program for low-income families. And uh, it's based on income and based on family size. And sometimes there's some other eligibility guidelines. Medicaid is for non-long-term care needs. Um, so I'm sorry, Medicaid is for non-long-term care needs. Um, they also have a Medicaid long-term care program and often people kind of mix up because it's labeled, you know, they're both using the, the word Medicaid. So when, um, when you're applying for and needing health insurance for your family, uh, for yourself or your family, and you have limited income, um, you may be eligible then for Medicaid that covers general health insurance um, needs. Um, there are other programs like the long-term care Medicaid program for when you are in need of continuous nursing home or assisted living care, and that has different eligibility requirements that doesn't include the value of assets um, as one of the criteria. So that's Medicaid. Um, CHIP is for just kind of covering children under the age of 18. So say for example, you, um, you work for an employer that provides uh, only health insurance cover coverage for you, but you have children. You could get CHIP um, uh, health insurance for your children, right? Uh, in order to help get them covered. And it typically covers medical and dental care costs of children. And in some states, it also provides coverage for people who are pregnant, uh, meaning they don't have children yet, but they're about to, right? Um, and income and family size eligibility can be different um, depending on the Medicaid program, um, uh, program eligibility. So in other words, some states um, go by 100% of the poverty level, meaning if you have an income below 100% of the poverty level, you would be eligible for CHIP or Medicaid. Other states have done what is called expanded Medicaid or the CHIP. And so they might say, well, if you have income at 138% of the poverty level or below, you are eligible for Medicaid or children's health, the Children's Health Insurance Program. So that's one of the reasons why we said at the very beginning, where you live, what state you're from, may um, determine which programs you would be eligible for. So the uh, Medicaid and CHIP um, information can be found at, also at the healthcare.gov uh, website. Um, or you can call your local healthcare navigator or Department of Social Services. In Delaware, um, you can schedule an appointment 
um, with one of those uh, navigators and um, they could help you kind of determine um, what you might be eligible for. I know in both Maryland and Delaware, if you go on to the healthcare.gov website and move towards your own state's um, marketplace, the marketplace application is linked to your eligibility for Medicaid and CHIP. So for example, if I go to the marketplace and I put in my information and my income suggests that I am uh, under 138% uh, of the poverty level, it will automatically point me to who to connect with and begin the application process for Medicaid and or CHIP. And so it's a seamless process then for both of those uh, programs as it relates to also the marketplace. <clears throat> and that can be kind of confusing, uh, but that's how, how it works. So oftentimes we get questions like, what does that really mean in terms of um, income level, right? If I'm thinking about my own household, where, um, you know, what are those income thresholds that may provide me with some cost savings, cost sharing, premium um, subsidies, and or eligibility for Medicaid? And this is a chart that I pulled from uh, the Delaware, um, a Delaware uh, situation, Delaware website that helps articulate that a little bit. And the way we would read this, right, is you would look at the number of people in your household and <clears throat> read down the column. So in this case, for example, if I have three people in my household, and I make between $21,330 and $53,325, I would be eligible for some cost sharing assistance uh, when I purchase a premium, uh, sorry, a plan, a health insurance plan through the marketplace. If my income is between that 21,000 and 85,000, I might also be eligible for those premium tax credits. If my income is between 21,330 and 29,435, I would actually be eligible for Medicaid um, for my family. So I hope you can see from that sort of those, those income thresholds. This changes every year. Uh, it, you know, there's sort of like a cost of living adjustment that goes um, along with this every year. So you would need to check this every year. But especially for startup businesses uh, where there may not be a lot of income in the beginning, um, you may be eligible for Medicaid and um, and that may really help you, uh, um, <laughs> how do I want to say this, actually have some income uh, from, your, from your first few years as a business and health insurance coverage, right? That's the other important thing. So here I wanted to just do a quick uh, example um, that may be helpful to kind of look, understand uh, from the marketplace perspective. So here we have a, a, a family, Jim and Lynn, they own a sheep farm. They have four children under the age of 18. Uh, all are non-smokers. Together they earn $106,000 per year. They live in Delaware and they are eligible for that advanced premium tax credit. Um, based on that subsidy calculator that I mentioned, if you go to that healthcare.gov um, subsidy calculator, they are living at the 304% of the poverty level, which is less than that 400% threshold. So for six people, the premium would be around $864. The subsidy would be pretty significant of almost $2,000. And 
if it wasn't for the subsidy, they may be paying up to $2,800, almost $2,900 a month for um, health insurance. Um, the other URL on this page gives us um, a different calculator. Uh, this is um, put forth by the Kaiser Family Foundation. And uh, they also provide a really great calculator to kind of help you figure some of this out. As another example, we have Sam and Sally, also with four kids under the age of 18, all non-smokers, and together they earn $47,000 a year. Um, based on this, they are eligible for Medicaid and CHIP because they are living at 136% of the poverty level. So again, you, um, your income, right, uh, really can impact your eligibility for some of these um, uh, health insurance plans. And frankly, you know, for many small business owners, I know some of my uh, farm families that I work with, they are um, not earning that much and um, qualify for that Medicaid uh, option. So uh, again, here are some of the resources um, to kind of get connected to um, both Delaware and Maryland marketplace and or Medicaid uh, eligibility and um, application processes. Hey, Maria, can I just jump in for a second? Mm -hmm. I'm putting some of those, and Jesse's putting some of those links in the chat box, but we will also send all these links out in a single document after the program is over. So you have the clickable. Great. Links. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. So one of the other things that's been interesting um, in the last 10 years as, as our health insurance community has evolved is that um, uh, you know, we've always had broker dealers out there who are representing health insurance uh, companies and then they can pull from a variety of plans or a, a variety of companies to try and figure out which might be the best plan for you. But more recently, health insurance providers, the companies themselves, are selling directly to, um, to you and uh, to cover you and your family members. And so um, some of them are, if they're offering a health insurance marketplace plan, they may be able to enroll you directly in that plan. So it's important, though, to kind of pay attention to uh, who is allowed to be selling health insurance in your state. And so you might want to check the Insurance Commission's office and their listing of those uh, resources. And so check out that state, uh, state insurance commission and also the healthcare.gov. If you've been an uh, active or retired member of the Armed Forces, you may be eligible to use health insurance through the Armed Forces, and TRICARE is the uh, big example there, and then there may be some services through the Veterans Administration that you would be eligible for. And so there are some resources there you can connect with to find out more about that. And then Medicare. So this is a biggie, right? Medicare is really for people who are over 65 um, and or if they uh, have some sort of a disability. And it provides health insurance coverage for what they call hospitalization, which is part A, doctors and medical services and equipment, uh, which is part B, and prescription drugs, which is part D. And um, so when you pay in Social Security and Medicare taxes, you contribute to Medicare throughout your working lifetime, um, then you are eligible, right? And then you get the benefit of um, not paying a premium for Part A, but paying a premium for Part B that is fixed. And this year it's about $135 a month, which is a bargain, right? Um, so how much you, um, so, so how do I wanna say this? You have to have revenue in your business in order to pay those um, em employment taxes, that, that, those FICA taxes. When you're paying those FICA taxes, you are paying those Medicare and Social Security taxes. When you put in those 40 quarters or roughly 10 years worth of um, contribution, then you are eligible for um, 
uh, getting Medicare at that really reduced rate. If you haven't paid into the system, you can still get Medicare. You just are not, you're paying a higher rate, right? Um, in terms of Medicare, you need to sign up within that seven month period around your 65th birthday or birth month, right? So three months before, three months after, plus the month uh, in which you're, you're uh, turned 65. Um, and you want to do that. Uh, it's different than Social Security, right? Many of us don't get officially our Social Security benefits or full retirement age is not until 67. But for Medicare, it doesn't matter. It's always 65. Medicare pays roughly 80% of the healthcare costs. So many people then are purchasing supplemental or Medigap insurance in order to wrap around um, the costs that Medicare doesn't pay. Um, and then there's these other things that have been around for a while called Medicare Advantage plans. Um, and they are uh, Medicare's version of an HMO. Um, and it usually provides medical, dental, and vision coverage. It's not available in all areas, but when you move uh, to that age 65, that's when you'll start looking at those plans and seeing what would be available for you. And basically the Medicare.gov website is excellent in terms of um, providing information about Medicare. Um, if you're employed and you have an employer-based plan and that you can keep that employer-based plan when you retire, that may be the plan that wraps around Medicare when you turn 65. All right, I'm going to briefly talk about Christian healthcare plans or healthcare sharing ministries. They are not really health insurance. They are not an insurance plan, but they kind of work like an insurance plan in that you are paying a premium. It gets, uh, it's, it's managed by an independent organization. Um, there's usually thousands of members who agree to share the costs of all the members' medical bills. Um, there's usually a personal uh, deductible. Uh, typically, as a member, you are paying your out-of-pocket costs, or not even that, you're paying the full cost and then turning around and applying back to the membership, the, the healthcare ministry plan to say, can you reimburse me for some of these costs? And there's typically an eligibility uh, mel membership. You know, you usually have to be a Christian who is not using tobacco or drugs or alcohol or, or you know, use prescription drugs in moderation and have a very healthy lifestyle. So there are kind of costs and benefits to this uh, type of plan um, in that, you know, payment is not guaranteed. It really depends on the, um, on the group, uh, how solvent the group is, and um, also the kinds of um, things you're trying to get covered in terms of um, medical expenses. Uh, I well, briefly I want to talk about skinny plans and short-term plans. And basically, these skinny plans are limited benefit plans. They are less expensive than the health insurance marketplace, but they don't cover the same kinds of services. Um, they don't uh, have to provide what are called the essential benefits. And Dorothy's going to talk a little bit more about what those are in a minute. Um, they can deny coverage to consumers who have some pre-existing conditions, and there's really a limited medical benefit um, in terms of paying mostly for routine care and not paying for catastrophic care. And there may be limits on how much get pay gets paid out each year. Um, so those are skinny plans. The gap plans typically are those that um, are short-term, um, you know, are covering a gap. So say you have lost uh, your job um, and you're wanting to have a little bit of coverage before you start your next, um, next uh, place of employment. Um, and it's a great way to kind of have major medical policy coverage and a short-term safety net. And so you really want to look at uh, and connect with those local insurance commissioners to see uh, who is allowed to be selling in the state and um, the kinds of things that they are selling, the kinds of plans they're selling. 
All right, so what about if you're health insurance options for an employer and you wanna try and cover employees? So uh, here are some of the ways that we can do this. So health insurance tax credit, health reimbursement accounts, health savings accounts, flexible spending accounts are an arrangement through your employer that lets you pay for many out-of-pocket medical expenses with tax-free dollars. So which one of these, right, um, is an example of an arrangement through your employer that lets you pay for out-of-pocket medical expenses with tax-free dollars. Question two is an employer-funded group health plan from which employees are reimbursed tax-free for qualified medical expenses up to a fixed amount per year. Number three is a tax credit you can use if you qualify to lower your monthly insurance plan when you enroll in a plan through the marketplace. And the last one is a medical savings account available to you if you have a, a health savings account or qualified high deductible health insurance plan. This um, account allows you to save pre-tax dollars for qualified medical expenses. All right, let's see how we did. So, <clears throat> an arrangement through your employer that lets you pay for many out-of-pocket medical expenses with tax-free dollars. So the answer to that, right, is, um, is, uh, is the flexible spending account, right? Um, and it may also be the health savings account. So we've got kind of two right answers, but most of the time it's a flexible spending account because that's an arrangement through the employer, right? An employer funded group health plan from which employees are reimbursed tax free for qualified medical expenses up to a fixed dollar amount. And this is usually the health reimbursement account. Let's see, a tax credit you can use if you qualify to lower for your monthly insurance when you enroll a plan through the marketplace, and that is that health insurance tax credit. And lastly, a medical savings account available to you if you have a HSA qualified high deductible health insurance plan, and this account allows you to, have, to save pre-tax dollars for qualified medical, and that is the health savings account, right? So you did pretty good. It's a little confusing. There's a lot of terms out there. So um, quickly, we'll talk a little bit about the shop. Uh, and the shop is um, kind of the, it's available through the health insurance marketplace. It was designed to help employers offer plans to their employees. Um, a farm or a non-farm business must have uh, one to 50 employees in order to be qualified to use the shop. Uh, and you may be eligible for some tax credits as the employer that can help you offset the cost of providing insurance. Um, usually there's one plan, one or two plans that a state offers uh, that you can then sort of choose um, and offer that plan to your employees, or you can um, kind of you can uh, offer employees flexibility um, by letting them choose uh, from um, multiple plans, right? So then they would pick the plan that best works for them. Um, but it only covers health healthcare costs. Uh, although dental is also offered, so you could choose how much you wanna pay towards your employees' premiums and whether to offer coverage to their dependents and how long uh, new employees must wait before enrolling. So there's lots of opportunities to kind of um, create a plan that works best for you. Another option is to go to an agent broker and talk with them and they can help you figure out which plan works best for your situation and help you shop around. Uh, between different health insurance company providers. And then there's ways to just help cover healthcare costs. So there's this idea of a health reimbursement account. Um, and so as an employer, then what you might say to your employees is I will put X amount of dollars aside 
that will help uh, them cover those out-of-pocket healthcare costs. So they have to be, um, there, are, there are IRS rules around this. It can only be um, medical expenses that are allowed by the IRS. And so those funds would pay for medical expenses until they're exhausted by the employee. So um, as an employee, I would go out and choose my plan as an employer I might help offset some of the costs from that plan. <clears throat> so that's one tool. The other tool that people have used um, is, you know, paying people a higher salary, right? And that, and then allowing them to use that money to buy health insurance. But the downside is, is you don't know whether they're really going to spend it on health insurance. At this point, there's some really great resources in this IRS publication. Um, this kind of gives you the ins and outs in terms of these options for covering health insurance costs by uh, for your employees. And, um, and so that would be the, the, the place to go for more information there. All righty, thanks Maria. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this home. Um, the question is where, you will, well, like I mentioned earlier, we will send you a follow-up with many of these links, but where else can you go for information about your health insurance coverage, especially when it um, concerns your particular policy that you already have? Um, and so we have three resources now up on the screen. Um, one is the, um, to the left, the healthcare.gov website, and we've shared that link, and we'll share it again after the program. Um, wealth of information. They're organized um, quite well. Um, the other document that you see on the right is your evidence of coverage. That, um, if you have traditional um, health insurance, um, insurance that you either purchase separately or purchase, um, get through your employer, you receive um, usually a booklet. Sometimes it's online. Um, you can request the paper copy if you choose. Um, you receive this each year um, when you renew your policy. And if you um, get it and you file it or you recycle it, definitely keep it. It has, it's the agreement between you and your insurance company, um, and it has all the information that you need to turn to if you have a particular question, including um, what's covered, what's not covered, what your deductibles are, and, and what's your co-insurance, you, what do you do if you have a dispute with your insurance company, and, and so much more. So that's all in that evidence of coverage booklet. Um, an exception is that if you have Medicare all of the information is on the website and you do not receive a paper copy um, or separate evidence of coverage. Um, so all of these three are great resources. The healthcare.gov, um, if you have your insurance on the marketplace, um, provides good information or your, um, your evidence of coverage from your individual insurance company. So the last question we're going to address is the how. How do I choose a health insurance plan? Um, and we'll um, walk you through a couple of considerations and resources. Um, the first is to review what um, is even covered under your health insurance plan. So if you purchase health insurance on the marketplace or if you um, receive most plans that are under the Affordable Care Act, uh, governed under the Affordable Care Act, it, your insurance policy has to cover 10 um, what are called essential health benefits. Um, I'll list them here, um, pull them all up to make it easier. There we go. So these are the 10 categories of services um, that are mandated under the Affordable Care Act. Um, they're on the screen, but I'll just I'll read through them. Um, so you have them um, starting from the left, preventative and wellness services, um, lab tests, hospitalization, prescription drugs, um, services and devices for injuries, disabilities, or chronic conditions. I'm um, on the right, outpatient care, maternity and newborn care, mental and behavioral health treatment, pediatric care, and emergency room services. Now, of course, this does not mean these services are free. Um, most of these have some type, some component of um, either uh, deductible or out-of-pocket expense to go with it, with the exception of certain preventative and wellness services. Um, it's important to look at what's covered because um, Maria mentioned skinny plans. That's a term for some what are usually short-term plans, um, short-term being typically 18 months or fewer, that don't necessarily cover all of the essential health benefits. Often the two that are left off are mental and behavioral health treatment 
or maternity and newborn care, but it is important when you're considering what insurance to purchase to look to see what benefits are being covered. Does it cover all essential, all of the 10 categories of essential health benefits, or are there some that are left out? Um, so what resource can you use to, um, to, to, to sit down and, and estimate what your needs are, what your uses are, how do you plan? Um, we provide a resource, um, it's, a, it's a booklet, our smart, um, Choice Smart Use Health Insurance Workbook, and we'll also send this as a PDF when the program is over. And it's a great resource to help you walk through some of the decision-making process without leaving out important, um, important details. So I'm going to show you some sample pages from the booklet. Um, you can look through it yourself um, in more detail when it's sent out. Um, but for example, um, there's a section that helps you determine what your health insurance needs are. What, what doctors do you see? How frequently do you go see them? Um, and there's a, a list on the left-hand column for the people in your family so that um, it, it's a good reminder of, of what services you actually use before deciding what policy you need to cover those services. And because you want to make sure if they're um, healthcare providers that, that are important to you, that you continue your care with them, that you choose a policy um, that will include them. So there's a health insurance needs worksheet. Um, there's then a plan comparison section where um, you can look through different plans better um, so you can comparison shop between plans that are available to you. And then I do see there's some um, items in the chat box. I'll take a look at that momentarily. Um, the last, oh, that was the pages in the booklet. I thought we had one more page coming up. But you can see some sample pages from the booklet, including an explanation of terms. Um, the booklet is not necessarily just for farmers or small businesses. Um, it's geared toward individuals, but of course, everyone making the decisions, whether it's whether you are with a business or your farm owner, um, are, you're, you're, going, you're taking the same approach um, to determine your health insurance needs. So this booklet really is for everyone. So let me see. It is six o'clock. Um, we are about out of time. So um, I think we won't do this last poll here um, as far as the, the terms. Um, we'll quickly cover just four tips that we've come up with for managing your health insurance costs. Um, so you can see them here, um, just four suggestions for some four strategies. One is to review your health insurance documents to understand the plan and its cost. Um, they're, um, Plans can vary significantly in cost, especially once you start to use them. So looking to see what the deductibles are and the out-of-pocket costs are relative to your use um, is, is important. Um, you can, um, depending on what plan, the, the cheapest plan, what plan with the cheapest deductible isn't always the best plan, um, the cheapest plan ultimately when it comes to how much you use your insurance and what you use it for. Um, so, Number one, review health insurance documents to understand your plan and its cost. Um, two is to review the co-payments, co-insurance, and deductibles, um, and to make sure those fit within your um, personal financial situation. Um, it may be um, better for one individual to choose a plan with um, higher monthly um, payments and, and have smaller deductibles and vice, or vice versa. So number three, calculate how much to set aside to cover out-of-pocket costs. Um, so you can uh, factor that into your um, annual spending plan or your budget. And lastly, shop around for health, dental, and drug insurance plans each year. Just like you'd shop around for um, maybe clothes or your groceries, shop around for your insurance as well. A plan that's, that's good at one point in time might not always be the best plan for you moving forward. <laughs> 